Hey everyone, so I'm excited to introduce you to this talk since this talk is with Roy Dean. For those of you who do not know, Roy is a high-ranking professional Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu instructor who also has black belts in Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, Judo, and also Aikido. Years ago, Roy has made a transition from traditional martial arts to functional martial arts. And uh, a year ago, soon after the Aikido vs MMA video that I released, where I pressure tested my Aikido and which led me to this journey, he was one of the first people to help me through that transition, to explain what to expect and to just help me figure out what's happening. Uh, you can see this initial talk, I'll leave it down in the top of the comments, uh, but this talk is great because a year has passed since that video, many things has changed for me. Uh, Rodin has been in many different projects himself and has a big positive influence uh, in the Aikido world as well. So there's a lot of great things we covered and I hope that you will find this video as exciting as I did and I hope you will enjoy this interview. So without further ado, I will let you to the talk. Let me start by saying I'm very, very happy that we're having this conversation again. And uh, actually it's been a year. I double checked, uh, specifically the date was of our first conversation released August 10th. So it's a month and just a few days. So, so, but I feel a lot has happened during that last year. And uh, that's what I'm, one of the things I want to talk to you about, but just I wanted to say, I'm very happy to have you here and uh, looking forward to, to get this conversation going. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, I think you've probably had some epiphanies over the last year mm. that, um, that are significant. You know, I mean, every year of training, uh, you can have, some major breakthroughs, it's enough time. And um, I'd be curious to, as to what yours are. Yeah, cool, I'm very curious. Uh, I know a lot has happened. Uh, I, I imagine a lot happens in your life all the time, but uh, in terms of Aikido, uh, a lot has happened for you as well with that, like some projects and everything. So I'll definitely ask about that um, in a moment. But just uh, as the first question, I actually wanted to ask since that year passed, I, I remember quite vividly our conversation, our first conversation that was like, I was just so fresh out of the Aikido versus MMA experience and all this realm of functional martial arts and just questioning was so new. And you helped me to get into this whole new experience very well. So I remember very well our conversation, but I'm just curious, what has changed in your relationship to Aikido since that year passed? Because uh, that, that question, seems to be an active one as well for you, uh, aside from doing BJJ. Yeah, with Aikido, I've definitely rekindled um, a strong relationship with Aikido uh, over the last year. Josh Gold and I have been working together very closely. Uh, we've become good friends and uh, we work very well together, I feel. Mm. Um, so we've been pioneering this Aikido Journal Academy. Um, we're using, uh, I think a very, Kind of modern and robust delivery system uh, called Kajabi. I think it's the right software for us to deliver a really high quality um, educational experience. Mm. Um, we've done a number of courses. The first one was bulletproofing pins, mm. where we took traditional Aikido attacks and techniques, and then went one step further if that technique didn't didn't work or if uh, something you know, went awry or they resisted in a very common uh, response manner. You know, that over the years, people would kind of respond to specific uh, attacks in a certain way. You, you'd be doing an Ikkyo, they would roll out in a very specific mm -hmm. fashion. So we wanted to kind of cover those bases uh, where people would often go, common paths of resistance, and then, um, you know, just some jujitsu-esque follow-ups. Uh, for Aikido techniques. So that went very well. We followed it up with um, a key Aikido course by Koichi Tohei, um, which was a remastering of a course that Stanley Prannan had done. Um, I did a new voiceover, new music, um, mm. put it together through the Kajabi platform and had a bunch of supplementary material because the archives of Aikido Journal are so immense. Um, it was a really, really rich multimedia experience that we were able to create. Um, the third course, Bulletproofing, I, I'm sorry, um, Aikido Extensions with Bruce mm. Bookman. Uh, you had a chance to review that yes. and take a look at it as well. Uh, very proud of that course. Very happy with the way it 
came out. Uh, honored to work with Sensei Bookman. He was one of my inspirations to begin training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well as just cross training in general, um, mm -hmm. branching out from Aikido. A phenomenal martial artist. His students were also really impressive. Uh, in a number of ways, well-rounded martial artists, great ukemi, they knew how to punch, they knew how to kick, like really punch, not mm -hmm. symbolic punching, really yeah. punch. Um, you know, that they had ground game. It was, it was a fantastic and very smooth weekend. I mean, filming was a breeze. We had a seminar, that was great. People came all from all over the US and Canada. Um, and then we did the, uh, we kind of topped it off with some more in-depth material the next day. So that was a great weekend. The course has done very well. And uh, we're looking forward to the next course, uh, which is going to be Aikido black belt requirements. Okay. Oh, that's so, I haven't heard about that one yet. Yes. Um, so uh, that's all I will say about that. But um, <laughs> it's, it's in, it's been filmed. It's been filmed and we're looking forward to producing another really high quality course uh, mm -hmm. for Aikido Journal Academy. So, that relationship traveling up to Ikazuchi Dojo. Uh, Ikazuchi Dojo is uh, run by uh, Haruo Matsuoka, um, as well as Josh Gold, but he's the, he's the main instructor there mm. and the figurehead. And uh, he's a great martial artist, great spirit, um, open-minded. And um, yeah, it's just been great to kind of reestablish this relationship with Aikido um, mm. now that I'm in my 40s. Uh, as I did it kind of in my late teens and then early 20s. Right, right. There's so many questions coming from what you said, uh, but the very first one uh, for me is, it's just, it's part personal, but also I'm sure interesting for everyone. Uh, the bulletproof uh, Aikido, the bulletproof and pins for Aikido? I can't. Correct. Okay. So the, when that course came, it was uh, the first course, uh, like the first official course where you were, publicly visible with Aikido, I think, uh, if that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as I saw it, I was very excited and very interested, but I never saw anything specific from it. So I was just so curious to use the chance and ask, how, how was it? What did you discover? What did you add, if, if I can ask? Um, well, you know, over the years, I had come up with a few of my own um, solutions. Mm. Um, if they happened to roll out, I covered it. I covered some of these things Early when I first launched my academy, um, mm. I did a DVD called Art of the Wrist Lock. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I, I did a number of um, wrist locks you can do in BJJ um, and then kind of combination techniques, whether it's Japanese Jiu Jitsu or Aikido, going into, say, a Kotagaish, mm -hmm. they flip out of it. Boom. How do you follow that up um, with either? Establishing the position like neon belly or going into an arm lock or say you do an Ikkyo uh, and they roll out of it, you can easily transition into a, um, a crossbody arm lock very, very smoothly. Mm. So I did, I had some of those solutions, but we really beefed it out with, with Josh. We did kind of every different position. We, we thought about um, if, they, if they resisted this way, but then if they did something kind of unorthodox and kind of went the wrong way, so to speak, um, how would we respond to that? What would be the easiest, most elegant solution. So we did, I would say over 40 hours of research and development, just experimenting with techniques and, mm -hmm. you know, have, so it was, it was, it was a, uh, a pretty thorough examination of that topic. And, um, I'm happy. I think it could be of great value to all Aikido practitioners. Um, so, you know, I'm just happy to make my contribution wherever I can. Great. Great. And, uh, Another thing which I was very eager to ask, so, so with all of this experience you, you went into Aikido again with, uh, you mentioned you reestablished your connection with Aikido. In the last conversation we had that year ago, uh, it was difficult to point out uh, positive things about Aikido because I guess my, my experience was very, very, as I mentioned, raw and present. And that was, that was an experience of discovery, but also it was a painful experience for me. And, and we kind of looked at- Sorry about that. Back. Oh, I mean, well, I mean, no, it's just like that was, yeah, it's, it's something I had to go through, so no problem. But, uh, but when we looked at it, we definitely looked at the lacks of Aikido, and, uh, and, and I think there are a few, quite a few, that's what my subjects are oftentimes about. But what, what after this year passed and you reestablished your connection, what, 
what the positive traits of Aikido or the positive potentials of Aikido did you potentially maybe you rediscovered or just found out about? You know, I would say that the most impressive aspect of Aikido, if I'm just looking at kind of body dynamics is the ukemi mm. and the ability not just to take roles, but mm. to stay engaged with the person to the very, very end of the technique. Mm. So, you know, if they're, if they're taking your balance, sometimes you go with it immediately. They take your balance right away. But mm. with Bookman Sensei students, they would kind of hang out until they were really, you know, it, and it's not as classic mm -hmm. ukemi as you might think, you know, kind of the orthodox, really crisp, beautiful ukemi. There's a, a little more like stutter steps, mm -hmm. half steps, catching your balance and then going down. Mm. Um, but that ability to stay with the technique and work with them, stay connected without breaking that connection, I've learned so much more about the value of that being a black belt mm. in BJJ. Because a lot of people, you know, they, they're too connected to their grips. Gripping is really important in BJJ. It's difficult to get, or I mean, even more so in judo, I would say. Um, but difficult to enter into, you know, your positions, your techniques without the proper grips. You need to, like, set the points on the shape that you're going to make. And those mm. are your grips. Mm. Um, but when it comes to... Um, people get like tunnel vision with their grips. And mm. then when people break them, you know, there's a lot of gnarled fingers and there's a lot of hand injuries in jujitsu. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't need to be like that. You know, somebody's going to just rip out. I let go and then I regrip. And I, I try to hold the person, you know, you hold the wrist, they shake their arm. You're still connected to the wrist. Your arm shakes too. Mm. You know, you're connected, but not trying to control. Mm. And I think Aikido really excels in doing that connected, but not trying to control from Tachiwaza from a standing mm -hmm. position, mm -hmm. you know, and really understanding where your balance points are there and being able to like lean over and take a technique and go into the ukemi, whether it's a, you know, a shihonage and you need to turn into it very quickly mm -hmm. or, you know, so being spherical and being open and receiving and being a little bit more, even more friendly with the math than a lot of jujitsu people are, right. you know, uh, I think, I think there's something really powerful about that. And that's mm. kind of like regenerative movement. Mm. Right. I really love what you're saying about that. And to a certain degree, that was part of my discovery as well. Uh, I keep on questioning still my Aikido experience and trying to bring the good things, which I learned. And definitely Ukemi was one of those points, which some of, some of the points would be, I would think about them and I would say maybe there's potential and sometimes I would decide maybe not as much but Ukemi kept staying it was like for me it kept feeling unique and uh, and useful which Aikido definitely brings to the table and I was curious to ask you here uh, I will come back to asking you more about your newest course the BGJ uh, Blue Belt Requirements 2.0 but uh, just a slight touch there in it you introduce Ukemi, there was a part of Ukemi, and I, when I looked at it, for me, it was my first thought was, oh, this is your, uh, this is a bit of your Aikido in, uh, in that course, and I was curious if that's true, and if, uh, since you have so much experience in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, is that something that is covered in Jiu-Jitsu schools? Because as you mentioned, and that was my experience as well, I, although I didn't practice so much, but it would be a lot about submissions and, and escapes, but, uh, and, and various other subjects, but it can be, uh, you mentioned that friendliness, friendliness with the ground or that receptivity, that's not something which would come up, uh, at least not would be addressed in any systematic way or even would be spoken about much, uh, although it's there, but, but it doesn't seem like it's addressed so much as it it's, could be. Do, it's do, really underemphasized in PJJ. Yeah. Okay. Some schools with a more um, with a more kind of standardized kind of warm up might be a little bit more well versed in ukemi because they introduce a variety, you know, mm. forward rolls. Any kind of judo school. I mean, my original ukemi background came from judo, mm. so I understood that. And 
a lot of people don't realize this, but different forms of jujitsu have different systems of ukemi. Mm. Um, and if you look at something like Sistema, I mean, they have their own system of ukemi, way mm -hmm. of receiving techniques and redirecting. Mm -hmm. So in judo, it's more about the, the, the break fall. Mm. That, that's much more important, being able to slap and absorb a fall right. um, kind of with a unified body so that your hand generally slaps at the same time your femur and the positioning of your legs so your heels strike straight down and you don't cross your legs where you get this kind of like low back um, twist, mm. which can be really painful and injurious. So, I mean, judo has that where they emphasize the break fall a little bit more. Ukemi, uh, Aikido has its own form of ukemi where they, they really emphasize tucking the leg and not extending it as they do in judo. Mm. In the Aikido Jiu-Jitsu that I studied, they have more, um, they have different kinds of mm -hmm. ukemi as well, like kind of different kinds of rear break falls or combining forward into backward rolls. Um, Hapkido, although I haven't really studied it, they have their own system of ukemi as well. So what I show is definitely an amalgamation of the different styles, jujitsu mm -hmm. styles of ukemi. A little bit of Aikido, a little bit of the Aikido Jiu-Jitsu, and mm. a little bit of the judo. Mm. Okay. And uh, so, so you do feel that it, it's something that BJJ could have more of, and maybe these systems Def could... Definitely. Definitely. It could definitely be more systematized. So the people really understand how to be, you know, take great ukemi from a throw, a judo throw, a wrestling throw, mm. or be able to kind of um, receive... Um, throws in other directions. You know, there's like, mm. for example, Rimi Nage. Um, some people do this kind of feather back break fall. Um, right. Yes. You know, there, there's nothing even like that mm. in uh, BJJ. So, although BJJ eventually, once you start getting into like bi dynamic body movements, mm. it does have its own advanced form of body control. Um, mm. You know, if you look at somebody like Cabrina or Jeff Glover, you, you can see them, you know, rolling around on their shoulders, going in and out of positions. Mm. Uh, Alvaro Romano uh, had a system called uh, Gymnastico Natural, where he combined yoga movements with jujitsu movements. Um, and I think that's really an excellent system. I haven't formally studied it, but, mm. but um, it makes but sense. But it's interesting. It sounds like that's though preserved for advanced people or, or is that open for everyone? For it's people? not as emphasized. Mm -hmm. Whereas in judo, I had to do six weeks of ukemi before I was allowed to, to even do a technique. Right. Or yeah. in Aikido, I mean, that they spend a significant amount of time, I think, at the yeah. beginning working on, working on ukemi, making sure your, your roles are, um, you know, they're clean. Right foot forward, right arm forward, you roll over the right shoulder. In jiu-jitsu, people do it and then you just kind of like approximate it. And I see a lot of people going over the wrong shoulder in jiu-jitsu, mm -hmm. you know, which is not necessarily bad, mm -hmm. but it can definitely lead to a dislocated shoulder, right? Um, you know, if, if not done properly. So mm -hmm. um, I do think that's one area where um, BJJ could look to Aikido. Mm, cool. Well, one more thing. Uh, which just came up. Actually, I didn't have it on my list of questions, but uh, wrist locks, you mentioned you made a course, uh, I think a while ago about that. But what, what, what seems interesting as far as I'm observing the world of uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, there's this thing going around uh, the net, the, web, uh, the internet. Uh, before, there was a big breakthrough apparently with leg, lock, leg locks. And now it seems like wrist locks are slowly becoming the new thing. Uh, so first of all, is that true in your experience that they're kind of being discovered, although they were there, but it seems like it's becoming much more uh, a part of the radar. Uh, so just to check if you feel that's true before I continue my next question. I think they are more accepted. Mm. I think they're more accepted now, just like leg locks are more accepted. Um, okay. So, so in the past, it maybe wasn't as... Uh, as practice it, it, it was fr it was frowned upon it was okay. frowned upon but um but yeah yeah it's been frowned upon in the past okay well because uh, so what i wanted again to look at as uh so for me actually so the aikido when i trained jiu-jitsu uh 
a koregashi with something was something which felt oh the, this looks nice this feels nice and i was able to tap into it early although i was uh told i'm a white belt so i should not do wrist locks it's not allowed until blue belt so that was a downer but i understand why was that but besides that i saw a koregashi there i know uh, some people who would apply sankyo or nikyo although i do feel it's very difficult uh but it seems like there's some wrist locks that can be applied to Aikido, uh, I mean, sorry, I mean to, from Aikido to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And so do you see a potential there as well of something that Aikido could offer uh, to the world of functional uh, martial arts? Uh, perhaps. Uh, okay. But, you know, I, I, I don't think that the wrist locks are unique to Aikido, though. Yes, um, true, true, true. Mm. So, mm-hmm. so I, I, I do think wrist locks are, you know, there are many martial arts. Um, mm-hmm. There are different ways. I mean, there are certain kind of mannerisms in which they're applied. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, kind of large, graceful motions, uh, very different than, say, like Hakuryu Jiu Jitsu, where it is the, the same wrist locks are applied, or right. they look the same, but they feel different. Mm-hmm. They're much more direct. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do think that wrist locks are, you know, another unguarded gate if you. If you're not mm. really hip to uh, to wrist locks, uh, they can really come on as a surprise. I've been caught by wrist locks. I got caught, I think, last week. Someone caught me in a wrist lock. Oh, Hadn't well. rolled with them before. They they caught me, and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, it's, oh, it's like that. All right, but it was it was all good. It was perfectly legit. Mm. So um, I think wrist locks are something that uh, you can attack, but you really need the positional dominance first. Right. Like yeah. for example, you need to be able to pass the guard, hold side control, then mm-hmm. use your shin to go over their bicep, pin mm-hmm. them at the elbow with your shin and your body weight, then reach back and grab the wrist lock. Right. So everything on their end is pinned, their elbows backstop, mm-hmm. you have total control. Right. It's difficult to get that kind of control at the mm-hmm. early stages of BJJ. Yeah, very much resonates with, with with my experience as well. What you're saying is, is I would sometimes, and I think that's the bad part of, of me, of uh, especially in early stages, of wanting to push my keto into into somewhere, and I would try to force yeah. those wrist locks or or wrist throws. But but then, uh, as you mentioned, the setup wouldn't be there, and uh, so it was just just the wrist lock wouldn't do it. And so yeah, I, I guess I learned that lesson uh, myself as well from what you're saying that it's just it's not enough just to apply the wrist lock it the whole game has to be behind it so yeah i see and and just a very quick question before i continue uh are you yourself are you uh supporting or how do i say uh would you promote and suggest to people to to look into wrist locks or do you feel there's some danger like i mentioned in uh, as a white belt I wasn't. I was told I shouldn't do it. Or in competition, it's not allowed until blue belt. So, do you have a like? Do you have a positive relationship with wrist locks in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, or you think it's something which is just a side dish? Oh. To focus on? No, no. I mean, it's it's a, it's cool submission, just like every any mm-hmm. other submission. Um, the problem is not everybody has a level of control to exercise it and not damage the other person. So that's mm-hmm. why they're forbidden at white belt because mm-hmm. they don't feel like they're gonna. People may not have. The control they may not really understand um you know how to put on the brakes a lot of people initially when they get involved in a martial art they don't know how to activate just one body part or one area of their body Mm. um very much like yoga it's kind of like it's strenuous initially all over but later you can flex one area of your body and totally relax another area of your body. Right. right so right. It's, it's, it's very much like that. You need to have a sensitivity. Like think of the range of motion of a wrist versus a range of motion of an arm bar or a knee bar. Like that's a much larger arc. So there's more time to tap. Mm. Cool. I see. Uh, oh, something I wanted to come back to, and I think uh, this is, probably a big question and, and, and a tough one, but the first conversation we had was the future of Aikido. That was the subject, that was the topic, or at least the official one. Uh, through everything you experienced in the past year and having your reconnection with Aikido, what do you feel 
how would you comment about the future of Aikido today? Uh, what would you say is, what would you consider its place to be in the world as, uh, from your perspective today? Well, I think we've definitely made some strides uh, mm. in, in the right direction. Um, modernizing it, um, the relaunch of Aikido Journal was, was key in that, I feel. I feel mm. it's definitely the leading edge of the art. Um, presents the right image. Um, it's connected with all the top people. I, I feel like, um, like they are looking at the future and bring in high level, high quality instruction to people around the world in a really digestible format. And also the subject matters that they cover, it's, it's, it's high end. Um, and so I feel that they are making um, a lot of progress. Uh, you know, and other people are making uh, progress in their investigations into the art uh, as well. And I think that's good. I think compared to a year ago, um, I think there's a much greater dialogue. Right. Uh, yeah. that, and more people are talking about, and more people are open-minded. They're seeing the, mm. the realism of, for example, in the uh, Aikido Extensions course. Bruce Bookman, he studied boxing. He knows how to throw a jab. Right. He kn his students know how to throw a jab. It's a real mm. jab. Mm. It's a real jab cross. Mm. Uh, it's not a fake one. I mean, it looks he, only because he has so much experience. He makes it look effortless, easy to yeah. E yeah, effortless to be able to go in and enter into that clinch range. Mm. Um, mm. I mean, th that that his the brilliance of Bookman was combining, kind of playing the percentages, which is crashing into the clinch, which is what the Gracies did, and then just. Mm switching out that that distanced area um from kickboxing or whatever to aikido so you use aikido techniques plus like a grace style clinch uh and then you can go back into aikido you can go into grappling do whatever um i think i think that's powerful and i think mm -hmm. you know innovations like that spur other innovations right mm -hmm. yeah definitely yeah, so yeah so i think people are, are jazz people are more excited about the art uh, now than they were a year ago. Right. Uh, this also nicely leads to, to another question. Uh, so in the beginning, uh, when I had my, let's say, revelation of understanding that uh, what, what I was missing in my training, in my Aikido training, uh, first I thought it's Aikido exclusive. But as I investigated into the subject, I realized it's, it's maybe Aikido is more obvious to, to see the flaws of lack of pressure testing. But, but a lot of other martial arts, or at least a bunch of them, seem to have almost the same problem. It's just not as visible. Like, for example, and I don't know if you agree with me, but uh, like Ding Chun, for example, or I'm still up to this day, I'm questioning Sistema. Uh, I haven't experienced it yet. I'm looking forward to try it out. But, but when I look at the videos, when I, when I read about it, it seems that there may be something, some, some problems there as well. Uh, but so Aikido definitely doesn't seem exclusively uh, that it's exclusively having these uh, these issues of the need to question and the need to evolve uh, so first of all do you, do you agree with that do you feel some other martial arts need that reevaluation as well and from what was happening in the, in the past year in Aikido do you feel that is happening in other martial arts or maybe it should be happening so what's your opinion about other uh, less functional martial arts It depends on the function. Mm, right. I mean, it, I recently went to a Qigong workshop um, mm. at a monastery and oh. it was fantastic. And the function of that is not fighting. They were describing certain motions having fighting application. And I actually recognized in BJJ some areas where I do use that same motion and the same body parts, you know, to actually mm. go into, use it as fighting technique. But it, depends on, on what the goal is. Is it health? You know, I mean, martial arts, as, as my great teacher says, you know, it's like saying a vehicle. Uh, and there's, there's different kinds of vehicles. There's motorcycles, there's big trucks, there's, you know, there's Teslas, there's what, it depends. It's not the, what's the best car, what's the best automobile, what's the best vehicle. It depends on what you need it for. Uh, so I think a lot of those are, 
I, I really am not into judging functionality of martial arts. I mean, mm. if you want to be in your own world and, and, and just feel like it's functional, I'm not, I'm not into criticizing that. I just want people to move. I just want people to move and like discover a little bit more about their bodies. And then if they have, you know, if they're hot blooded and they want to really understand about self-defense or fighting arts, then they can move and gravitate into to something else. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pop anyone's delusions by myself. They have to, I might suggest something that allows people to reevaluate what they're doing. But I mean, everyone has to go through that, that difficult epiphany by themselves if they are concerned with martial effectiveness and if they're questioning the value of what they're doing in relationship to martial effectiveness. But a lot of people don't care. Mm. Most people don't care and they're not that, they're, they're really not that discerning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've known people in other realms of life. They, they talk about this one, you know, motivational speaker and he was a world jujitsu champion. Roy, do you know this guy? You should know this guy. I mean, it's a different kind of jujitsu. Was he really a champ? I mean, some of these mm. people might advertise. I, I, I looked up one guy in particular. It was like, there were three, he was a world champion in his style. There are only mm. three schools around the Los Angeles area, you know, but that's part of his resume. Most people buy it. Mm -hmm. Most people are okay with it. Mm. They're not that discerning. For those of us that are interested in true martial prowess you're not going to be satisfied with those other things mm -hmm. so you just like respect it for what it is and then move on and continue your own martial explorations cool cool i see well uh some so a direction i wanted to um, to move a little bit further to uh so i as you know and you, you even supported me in that uh which i appreciate a lot uh my next step in my personal martial arts journey is to go to uh, SBG Portland and to do MMA and also BJJ. Uh, and I did a little bit of these trainings, but it's finally I found the chance to dive into it and and let it transform me. So as a as an, as an expert of this field, uh, could you give me some advice uh, on uh, being a good student and learning as much as I can, as best as I can in these realms? just drop everything you know or think you know mm. just be absolute blank slate white mm. belt beginner mind you'll learn more mm. uh, and you'll be safer mm. don't hold out on a submission don't if you if you feel like you're under attack you know learn from the experience don't be afraid to lose and mm. um, you know most commonly when people dive into these things they often get injured um, and in a variety of ways. I mean, I've, I've seen people do trips like this many times. Mm. You have to be particularly careful coming off the plane. Mm. Like you're dehydrated, your joints are, are not quite what they should be. You, you should not, I would not recommend just diving into training. Right. I would recommend training lightly for mm. like as light as you can for the first week, let your body acclimate, let your, the, t mm. the time adjustment, um, set in, uh, get a, more in the natural rhythm of things. And then you'll have plenty of time to push it. And, you know, but I would, I would say I've, I've known a couple of people that have just gotten off the plane, dove into mm -hmm. training right. and popped their knees. Mm. Yeah. So I, a lot, I think a lot of it has to do with dehydration, um, having holding the leg in specific positions for too long, um, I would I would say just go, go into it very lightly and keep a beginner's mind. You'll be fine. Mm, cool, great, thank you. And uh, just looking at my journey as well, uh, just looking again back at the last year of uh, of the martial arts journey, the channel, the YouTube work I did. Um, you were, I mean, there were so many videos, so I never expect everyone to see everything, but, but I know you, you followed a little bit of it. And uh, there was one point you and me connected. And uh, so do tell me if, if you're open to talk about this, in worst case, I can, I can cut this out. Uh, but there was a moment when you and me connected and you gave me this feedback, which actually really, really appreciate it. And I felt it was the perfect time to do that. I needed a little bit of time to test proof 
that advice and to figure out that you are right. Uh, but maybe you're open to discuss a little bit about that and just to, to look back at that moment of my journey and to to talk about what you noticed was wrong and or was uh, was 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 maybe not the right step. So, uh, what do you think? Oh, I'm happy to I'm happy to talk about it. If you are, yeah. Essentially, you're talking about the email or the message that I sent. Yeah. You yeah. know what? It, that was during a phase when you were trying to um, you know, like invent your own Aikido style. Yes. And it's just, it was so off base, man. It's off base <laughs> for your development. Right. You need to, you, I, essentially, I'll paraphrase the message, but mm -hmm. you need to find a teacher, apprentice yourself, study, learn the ways. Don't do your own thing. Learn mm. the ways others have laid down. There are people who have carved this path through thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of hours. You need to go down the path. Mm. Don't chip your way through the rock quarry. They, that's, that's not the way to do it. So <clears throat> essentially, um, having you just kind of step back because you were, whatever, leaving your Aikido association, thinking about doing your own style, it's just you don't have enough time. I understand the idea and the intention and it being kind of a, a bold thing. Mm -hmm. um, like, oh, here's this new adventure. Not all adventures are the same size, hmm. right? So you're like, oh, I'm, I'm exploring new realms. I should just like really go for it and try to invent my own style. No, you, you, weren't, you weren't there yet. So what you're doing with Matt Thornton, SBG, you know, you're, that is definitely the right path. Hmm. I, I have personally experienced trying to integrate martial arts too early, Mm. you know <clears throat> in my own bjj career like you mm. try things oh that didn't work you know you're, you're trying to introduce different techniques aiki jiu jitsu aikido mm -hmm. whatever just so specific judo techniques don't work that well in bjj a lot there's a lot of things in judo that don't work well in bjj for okay. example turtling on the ground that is not generally a good idea mm -hmm. so you know, you need to kind of learn that functional martial arts so you have some usable, repeatable skill sets. And then you can go back. Like, I can do wrist locks on people and play around, but that's because I already know how to control the trunk and the branches, and then I can work on individual leaf. That's not a problem. You, know, you need to learn how. And during that time, I felt like I needed to steer you towards... Mm a much more beneficial path. You won't waste any time with the kind of the formation of, which is essentially a synthesis of what you've been exposed to and what you know. Mm -hmm. There's you, that's that maybe later, but not quite yet. Right. You need to, to get a little bit more. So I'm glad you found that beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, I felt it needed to be said, cause I do, I understand the journey you're going through. Mm -hmm. um, I've been there myself and you know, it's, sometimes you have to just like strap on that white belt and pay your dues and keep, you know, and grind. Right. 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 Definitely. Yeah. As, as I mentioned, I, I was, I always feel feedback and, and good feedback uh, as even if it's not comfortable is such an essential part of, of development. And so yeah, I wanted to just, look at that with you and just also say thank you i think uh, not everyone sometimes people are just they they don't want to get into in the way or they're they're just polite and not everybody says what needs to be said so it's always nice to get the right words at the right time so that was that was really great and uh, just to ex uh, if, if to expand on this i think it'll probably be, si be similar uh, what you might say but uh again doing my journey publicly uh, I connected with a lot of people who 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 were who were or a lot of people who are going through through this phase of questioning their martial art and and uh, and I think actually a bunch of people went through this. That's what I discovered when I thought I will do this. I realized oh, a lot of people tried and and they came to a similar conclusion that I did uh, in terms of realizing well, as you said, there's there's a lot of grinding to do. It's not just about learning a little bit of something else and, and making your old things happen. Uh, but so people who are questioning their martial art, who are having the difficulties uh, with their current practice, uh, 
from what we spoke in the past, you, you went through that process, as far as I understand. So, so what would be your advice? What would your advice be to those people who who are having this difficulty of not knowing whether to f stop practicing their martial art, whether to try to invent something new, or or to just completely drop it and learn a functional martial art or cross train at the same time? What do you think is the right way, or what would your suggestion to those people who are having this crisis of, of faith in their martial art? What would what would your advice be to them? I would say just go ahead and start to explore something new mm. and something that interests you and d doesn't have to mean that you disrespect your teacher or their lineage or their art, but just do something new. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and kind of move in that direction. If that interests you, that's mm. essentially it. I mean, invent something new, please. Um, there are people <laughs> that are so deeply qualified so right. like Bruce Bookman, you know, he left the Aikikai, but he could easily be if he's, he left at six dawn, you mm -hmm. know, he's, uh, she really should be an eighth, you know, black belt, BJJ boxing experience. Mm -hmm. He's really done it. He's mm -hmm. really done, um, the warrior's journey. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, he has his own, his own place, but he hasn't invented his own martial art. He teaches them separately. So, it's, you know, if you want to do your own style, I, I'm not about limiting people's creativity, but I do mm. feel like it's, you have to be kind of well justified uh, mm. in doing something like that. You have to have real skill that you can apply right. against resisting opponents that are also skilled. Mm. Right. That's a good point. I see. And, and just a quick side question to this, if, to address that to Aikido people who are, who are searching for functionality, would you, would your suggestion if, if they want to cross train, would your suggestion be to go to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or boxing or, or MMA or, or something specific or just whatever they're inspired about? Do you think there's like, what's the, the first step of uh, learning a functional practice when for an Aikido person? Uh, you know, I, I think, uh, I think doing BJJ or mm. boxing would be good, good mm. moves. Uh, I, I think, you know, there's an elegance in boxing. Um, mm. I think you have more, I think you have more applicable body skills that would transfer over into BJJ than, than boxing, honestly. I mean, yeah. you, you do angle. I mean, some of your footwork. Um, I was recently doing an, uh, a knife lesson uh, mm. with a friend. And, um, you know, the footwork in his Kali system was, was basically Aikido footwork. Mm. And he was, he kind of noticed, oh man, you're, just, oh, you, you pick up on this very easy because, <laughs> right. you know, and then we just kind of flow. So it's cool. I mean, just play around with something else. But I think that BJJ is a, a very accessible, low impact, um, you know, great martial art for you to be able to understand what it takes to be able to program your body so that you have um, unconscious action. Right. And the number of repetitions it takes to be able to program your body into actually doing an effective uh, mm. attack or response. Yeah. Cool. Well, one more area I wanted to make sure we, we touch as we still have a little bit of time. Um, so is uh, a little bit about you and uh, so besides Aikido, is there, what were the big things that happened since I am, I keep coming back to this symbolical year, uh, but uh, what has happened, what, what are the major things which happened in, uh, in your life, in your career, and, uh, mm. uh, and uh, obviously I also have in mind the online course, but maybe something besides that as well. So could you just uh, share a little bit about that? You know, it's been, it's definitely been a whirlwind. I've been doing quite a bit of traveling over the last year, um, mm. a variety of places. I didn't mean for it to get so busy, but it just, <laughs> it, it just has a way of stacking up like that. Um, mm. I went to, I went back and saw my friend Ahmed Alhuli, uh, in Kuwait, uh, Gracie Baha Kuwait. Uh, always a pleasure to see him. It's, he treats me well. It's a wonderful country. Um, I have uh, some new affiliates that onboarded. Um, mm. I'm up in Norway, uh, Christensen Camp Sports Center. Great guy, Richard Hay, um, really skilled martial artist. Um, I'll be going back to Norway quite often. As a matter of fact, I just got back and I'm heading back in December. I went to Thailand mm. for the first time, uh, which was 
which it's so otherworldly over there. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, I mean, I've, I've just, there's been a lot of seminars and a lot going on. I'm very, very pleased with, with the media I've been able to produce. It's very mm -hmm. high quality. Um, I think I've been, uh, artistically inspired, uh, over the last year, blue belt mm -hmm. 2.0 people have told me that they, they get that feeling that yes. I was inspired. Not only okay. it was, it was good work, but it was, I mean, mm -hmm. you saw it. I mean, you, yeah. did you get that vibe? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Definitely. You know, there, there's something, there's something about, um, you know, onwards and upwards. And so to be able to like produce even, uh, yeah, blue belt requirements 1.0, that was kind of the gold standard back in the day, mm. but and it was great and still sells wonderfully, but, and mm -hmm. people love it. But how do you make something new that reinforces the old acts mm -hmm. as a standalone? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it pays homage, but it's, it's something fresh, respect the old, create the new. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I was able to do it. It was, it was, it's not always a, an easy tightrope to walk, but mm -hmm. um, I, th I think it was successful there. And I, I feel like my online channel um, that I have through VHX and Vimeo, um, mm. that it's grown considerably. I think that it's at a really great point. There's some really, um, uh, some travelogue stuff, you know, seminars and mm. other countries. Uh, there's some really artistic uh, work as well. And yeah, I think it's a very unique resource. So I've been happy with, the work I've been doing with Aikido Journal mm -hmm. um, and the Aikido Journal Academy, the work I've been doing on my personal channel. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, uh, yeah, it's been a good year. Next year is not going to be quite so busy. I mean, I still oh, have, okay. <laughs> I still have Russia. I'm going to go uh, see my guy in Moscow, Igor, mm -hmm. um, in, in a few weeks. I'm heading to San Francisco this weekend, Oklahoma next weekend. So, Next year will probably not be quite as busy as I've been this year, but, um, mm. but um, you know, it's, it's good. These mm. are, this is a time, man. This is a time in my life where I have the flexibility and the freedom to, to travel and explore the world. And so I'm taking advantage. Great, great, great. And since I had a chance to review the, the Blue Belt Requirements 2.0, uh, but I haven't seen the, the 1.0 you mentioned and, um, I've seen just snippets of the 1.0. Uh, so definitely the production value, I mean, the, the quality is just a whole another level in, uh, in the 2.0. Uh, but you mentioned there's the inspired vibe. So, so maybe you could say a few more things. What, what's the difference so that people would know what's, what's the, new, the new course about? Well, a part of the inspiration is, is like breaking through to new levels, uh, in terms of production, in terms of artistic presentation, in terms of mm -hmm. co compressing the message, how much energy can I send through um, this medium? You know, mm -hmm. and I think the opening, um, the great physical debate, mm -hmm. and you can see that on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I think that really, there's a lot in there. The more you listen to it, the more it kind of right. um, rolls out from itself in mm -hmm. terms of the journey. Um, I was also inspired. I've been using some new music libraries mm. and um, yeah, the music, you know, and, and in the, in the, in the physical debate, I, I definitely picked that up. <laughs> so cool. Cool. Yeah. 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 It's um, yeah. I feel like uh, we filmed in 4k kick ass mm -hmm. music library. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know how to mix that stuff. I know how to edit tightly. So it's mm -hmm. rewatchable. Um, I feel like there are some new techniques. Uh, my instructor and I, Mr. Harris, who originally mm. came up with the blue belt requirements, mm. you know, we agreed that we agreed that, um, you know, there were some back mount escapes it would, that would have been useful to include. Mm. Also, for example, headlock escapes. I didn't have room on the DVD to include that. I mean, mm. size limitations um, right. prevented me from including that on version one. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are some things it's, it can, it's a standalone, but if you have 1.0 and get 2.0, um, it will reinforce mm. uh, the lessons of 1.0. Cool. Great, great, great. Well, and I'm coming to the end of my official questions, uh, but just one more thing I wanted to ask. So there's a chance that while I'm in, in the States, 
uh, that I'll have a chance to drop by your place and by your gym. Uh, so maybe some ideas, if you could share something that that you could that you would be inspired to work uh, on when I'm there, or some some things, or just the basics, or so what do you think would be yeah, on the table? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, I don't think. Um... I don't think that, uh, I think the experience for you is going to be coming and rolling with a bunch of different body types and really mm. understanding like what that skill level is. This gym that, um, CVBJJ, Coachella Valley, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Judo that I train and teach at, uh, mm. is 30 years old. So we have, I mean, we have at least whatever, a dozen black belts. We just graduated mm. three more. Um, it is a deep, deep talent pool. And mm. I think you're just going to be blown away. You're going to be blown away by the skill. You're going to be blown away by the vibe, mm. um, how friendly it is, mm. uh, the variety of bodies. Um, so come by and dude, I will just, I'll look out for you. I'll set you up with guys uh, to roll mm. with. So you get like a really good experience. And of course I'm happy to roll with you as well. Oh yeah. And um, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, come on down, get a taste. And I'm, I'm telling you, you've, your ground game will improve. If you spent a week down here, um, you would walk away with a couple of real skills that, that uh, you could take back home. Cool, great. And very last, last official question. Uh, in terms of my journey, uh, any suggestions? Since you do know a little bit about where I'm heading, uh, something, some, maybe some, some dangers that you see that, uh, that I may... Uh, some faulty steps I may make uh, as, as that happened, what we discussed in the past or, or something, just, just some advice or in, in this journey of rediscovering martial arts uh, that you could say. Eat well. Mm. I think you need to refuel. If you're really mm. going to do an intense martial experience very often, that's, that's okay. the thing that kind of goes by the wayside. You need to figure out systems so that you can replenish. Uh, mm. you're, you know, you, seriously, you need to be able to work out systems so that you can go to a grocery store right. and right. really eat well. You should do not skimp on that. Mm. I'm, I'm telling you tap early, tap off and eat well. That's, that's <laughs> all you need. That's all you need. And, and I think if you, if you just look after that and, and take care of yourself, um, you'll be fine and you'll definitely mm. go back home with, a new appreciation for martial arts, a new appreciation for MMA and, mm. um, and some new skills that you can impart to others while you're over there. Great. Cool. Thank you. It's, it's great. You're saying that it's, uh, in terms of food, I was, I was thinking because it'll be everyday morning training and I'm sure I'm going to train in the evenings. And, um, I was considering how will I, how will my body <laughs> live through that? And especially since I'm not in my early twenties anymore, it's slowly getting harder, but but that sounds like like a good advice to make make sure my body has fuel to go to go uh, to go from. So great, cool. Well, that's uh, those are my main questions that I prepared. But is there anything else for for the last uh, moments you 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 like to? Um, bring up like a subject or or anything you'd like to share with with the audience or or, or me or anything. Uh, I just wanted to thank my instructor, Roy Harris, who's, mm. uh, he's been a great teacher to me. Uh, he gave me my purple belt all the way through my current rank. Um, he's a great man. Um, definitely uh, a moral figure. And um, yeah, I'm really grateful to be a student. Uh, and he's allowed me to, to kind of forge my own vision and journey and I always thank him for that. And I'd like to be able to do the same for my students. So just mm -hmm. thanks to my teacher and um, thanks to you for uh, taking the time to review blue belt 2.0. And, oh, um, thank you. Thank you. and I hope that you, uh, you have a good time at uh, street blast gym and then make your way down here, man. We'll, we'll mm -hmm. show you a good time and, uh, and give you a couple skills to bring back home. Great. Cool. And do I have one more minute for the very, very last question and to, to finish up? For sure. Right. Okay, so uh, spontaneously this came up, but so you mentioned your gratitude to, to, your, to your teacher. Uh, so my last question would be, what would be your suggestion for a person if he is searching 
poor teacher or what, what, what would be the qualify, um, qualities that you would suggest for a person to look for or the things to look for in choosing a good teacher? Personality, mm. um, safety, cleanliness of their environment, the progression that you see them guiding their students through, uh, word of mouth. Mm. Um, I would recommend go local, think global, mm. you know, expose yourself to the great teachers that are available online and work locally and develop your own community, uh, your own fellowship uh, with human beings where you can learn these body skills and get to know each other and exchange energy with people in your community. We mm. need that. We need to be able to form these groups. It's good for us on every level. So mm. I would say don't hold out to, to train with that person um, you know, that you really want to. Maybe someday you'll cross paths with them. But I would say go local and, and yet keep an open mind uh, for the global exposure and the unique moment we are in history where we have that exposure. Right. Cool. Great. Well, thank you. That wraps up my, my questions. Thank you very much for finding the time to, to have this talk. It's, it's really great to reconnect. Uh, I'll be really excited to, to meet you live. <laughs> it's, it'll be a crazy experience to, to have had to know you for a while now through internet and to meet you live will be a blast. So, so great. So, well, yes, yeah, so thank you again. And uh, so if, if people are searching for your work, where can they find you? Uh, where can they find you? Uh, just type uh, Roy Dean into the Google line, or you can go to RoyDean.tv and mm -hmm. go to my main site. And then from there you can, we have the store and we have you know, a little bit about me and my affiliates and, um, and yeah, and definitely look at my YouTube channel as well. There's a lot of great information there and hopefully it inspires you to explore martial arts or physical cultural, physical culture in general. Uh, I think that's part of the answer going forward. Um, we need to be more integrated with our bodies and then use that as a method of socialization.